bombastic, stealthy, precise, and violent. All of these words really describe the opening hours of Deathloop, Arcane Studios' newest game. It really seems to me like everything Arcane has done over the past few games, like Dishonored and Prey, have really culminated in what might be one of my favorite games of 2021. Today, we'll be talking about what Deathloop is, what I liked about it, and figure out if we can break this damn loop. Let's talk about that. Deathloop is Arcane's newest game out on PC and a console exclusive on PS5. You play as Cult, the only person on the island of Black Reef that actually wants to break the island's time loop. Similar to anything like Groundhog Day or any other time loop movie you've probably seen, all the characters on the island are stuck reliving the same day with virtually no consequences. The only two people who remember what happens are Colt and Juliana, the main antagonist of the game. While Juliana might be your most formidable foe in the game, there are also seven other visionaries that you need to take out so Colt can break the loop. And what you have to do in order to break that loop is probably the best feature of the game. That overarching puzzle on the island is the reason that I kept coming back. The game sells the concept of play your way very well, with most solutions to figuring out how to kill the visionaries having multiple paths. The game presents a really good sandbox to mess around because of its level design. Within a single loop, you're able to explore four different sections of the islands at four different times of day. At face value, this might not seem like a lot of options. It's really only like 16 if you, you know, do the math. But the game does a good job of changing each location based on the time of day, where you can always get new information about the visionaries on the island in each iteration. And information is definitely king in this game. Towards the beginning of the game, Colt realizes at the start of each loop that he loses all his gear, but he retains all knowledge from previous loops. This allows you as the player to retain all information in the lead system. Leads are the way the game pushes you forward to figuring out how to kill all eight visionaries in the games. There are also arsenal leads, which are additional puzzles to guide players towards unlocking additional gold rarity weapons or to upgrade your slabs, and there are also discoveries for more side quests around the world. Slabs are the supernatural powers that both Colt and Juliana have that can aid in combat, traversal, stealth, and basically however you want to play the game. Initially, the first slab you have is called Reprisal. It allows you to die twice within a level and then respawn to finish your mission or collect any residium on your body. Without the reprisal system, the game would have been substantially more difficult, especially if you have the PvP mode en enabled where enemy players can invade your loop as Juliana. I found the reprisal system really allowed me to be more aggressive when fighting specific visionaries because I knew if I respawned, I could try again and that really allowed for a lot of different experimentation. But aside from the reprisal slabs, there are also some slabs you might be familiar with if you played previous Arcane Studio games like Dishonored or Dishonored 2. There's a shift ability which acts as a short range teleport as well as Nexus which allows you to throw an AoE that links enemies together and if one enemy dies, they all die. These powers were really interesting to me and there weren't some powers that were pulled from previous arcane games and each one really allows you to approach combat and stealth in different ways. Generally when I played I always gravitated more towards stealth gameplay until I got to a target and then I would engage them and go in with the gunplay. And the gunplay was really fun in the game overall, especially if you get some of the gold rarity weapons like I mentioned before. And the shift ability for my playstyle really suited this well, because once you unlock it, it really lets you traverse the rooftops and from there you can gain intel from listening to Eternalists around the island or scout the area. And especially when you start to figure out more of the puzzles, it allows you to set traps with any of the trip mines or proximity mines, or to shoot your way through the situation. And this general approach for me was really well and helped me explore the map and really engage in the combat until Juliana comes by and you know pays you a visit. Because she's the main antagonist of the game and her sole purpose in the story is to protect the loop at all costs. And in order to do this, she must kill you over and over and over again. It's really apparent that she enjoys killing you as she talks to you through your radio throughout the majority of your game. And her relationship with Colt is probably the best part of the game for me. Aside from the combat, it's really where the writing and the voice acting shines through as their dynamic shifts throughout the game story as you learn more about yourself and more about Juliana. Both characters are really charismatic and play off each other well in the dialogue, and unlike other inhabitants of Black Reef, you two are the only ones who can retain your memory, so that can really fuel some of the dialogue and make it more engaging because she can have direct commentary on the actions you've done. For example, if you kill a specific visionary, she'll sometimes comment on that. 
and you'll have some witty retort. But aside from their conversations, Juliana is probably the most formidable foe you can face because whenever she invades your loop, there's always a sense of dread that she can be anywhere. Unlike Pult's reprisal ability, she has her own unique ability called Masquerade. With it, she can disguise herself as basically any enemy on the map. I generally found that she could be relatively easy to kill unless she has the Carnage Slab, which allows her to absorb damage. My main problem with um, Juliana uh, Invasions is doing it in the single player mode. I'll talk about the overall AI of the game later in the review, but she's just kind of dumb sometimes. Um, playing against other players though, can definitely provide more of a challenge, especially because you don't know it's a player Juliana until they kill you when it tells you their username. Um, playing as Juliana though is much more of a gamble because you don't have that reprisal ability. Masquerade is nice to be able to disguise yourself as as an Eternalist until you find your target, but really it's pretty apparent as a player if there is a Juliana as an NPC because you will probably not act like all of the AI in the game. But overall, being able to protect the loop as Juliana does provide tangible benefits for Cult. As you continue to kill Cult in that mode, there's a rank that increases and this can allow you to unlock additional outfits for Cult. While that might not be the best reward for your main playthrough, the cosmetic designs are pretty cool and once you really start to understand the level design of the island, it can be really engaging in order to uh, take out Juliana. Um, but as a Cult player, if you're playing through the main story, the main benefit of facing Juliana is the ability to upgrade or discover new slabs and the amount of residium you get from her. And residium is the currency that allows you to infuse your weapons and abilities and all the trinkets you get in the game. And residium really is the main currency of the game. You can get it in a few ways. First off is killing Juliana, as I just said, or killing all the visionaries. That grants you the biggest amount of residium in the game. There are also some small little pieces of objects that have residium on the map and they'll give you say 500 to a thousand and that kind of is different from the visionaries or juliana who will give you ten thousand and between each loop um as you go into morning to afternoon and you are able to infuse all of your items with residium um you can infuse any of your weapons trinkets or slabs or abilities if you want to save up your residium you can do that until the end of the day but at the start of a new loop you do lose it all it is pretty easy, I found, to get Residium, especially if you are farming the Visionaries and you figure out how to kill them, because all of them will usually drop their slab or their ability, and then a really good weapon, and then they'll also drop a lot of trinkets. And you can get a lot of repeats, and if you sacrifice those trinkets, you get more Residium. So it's really a system that allows you to mix and match what you want and be able to infuse as many things as you want overall. And this is kind of what makes it not a roguelite like I thought it would be. The whole time loop concept made me initially think it was, but as you go on, there's definitely a clear progression path through the game, which is really nice. And overall, I think the game is really, really strong, but I do want to talk about some of the cons that I did see in the game in case you are worrying about those. And one thing that I do want to mention before I get into my cons that I saw myself is the issues on PC. I played on PS5 because it's a PS5 exclusive and I wanted to see how it performed and how the DualSense work, if there are any next-gen features. And the only ones I really saw were the graphical options, um, similar to a lot of new next-gen games. You can do 4K60 or 4K30, and there's some little graphical options you can do as well. The main thing I've seen is on PC, there have been a lot of issues. I've seen some articles that I'll link down below from IGN and that say it's mainly because of the anti- the anti-piracy software in the game. So if that is something you're worried about, I would say um, wait until Arcane patches it. They said they are aware of performance issues and they are going to fix them, but that's mainly all I can say about performance. But the main thing in the games that annoyed me were the AI, and this was probably one of the biggest downsides for me was their inconsistency. Most of the time you can kind of walk up to an enemy and they wouldn't really notice you, but when I shifted towards them using the ability, and I landed behind them, they would notice me more. But luckily, most of the normal enemies in the game are pretty easy to kill, so this isn't a huge problem. I think the only problem I had with the enemies was when there were, say, four or five on me that all aggroed me at once. But I don't really think the normal Eternalist enemies should have been that difficult to kill, because that would have drastically changed how the game played overall. My biggest concern with the AI was Juliana, especially because she's supposed to be, like, 
the most formidable foe on the island. She's actively trying to kill you. But depending on the location, I found that she would frequently get stuck on rooftops, which made her an easy target, or she'd be stuck climbing different objects. And even one time I saw her fall off the cliff of a mountain almost into the water. I feel like as the primary antagonist, her AI behavior should have been a lot better. This isn't really an issue if you open up the game to other players, but it is something to note. And the visionary AI is also pretty bad as well. It is better than a lot of the other ones, especially the normal Eternalist. But once you kind of figure out how to kill them, they kind of follow the same path overall. And then the last thing that I want to talk about is the menu, because it's kind of all over the place sometimes. It's kind of hard to track everything if you're not looking at the lead system. If you're looking at all the discoveries in some of the settings in the menus, I found it could be pretty unintuitive, especially because a lot of the issues I had were in the menus where they would just freeze on me. I had one issue where I was going through my loadout and when I w tried to go back to the main menu, the loadout UI was still there and I couldn't select anything else. And even if I quit out into the main menu, that UI was still there. That was pretty disappointing for me, the fact that the menus did have that many issues. The only other thing to note with my issues was some of the audio issues I had. A lot of the sounds in the game felt really quiet to me unless you were kind of directly next to an enemy especially with some of the verticality in the game there was a lot of sound layering issues i found especially with the subtitles it was kind of hard to determine what who was saying what sometimes which was difficult for me especially when going after specific visionaries specifically alexis his big party at the end is kind of in a big mansion and it, depending on where you are in the mansion it's hard to hear people but aside from all those complaints, I really enjoyed my time in Deathloop. It's probably one of my favorite games of the year. All the work that Arcane's done in games like Prey and Dishonored have paid off. It combined elements from those previous games really well, and it creates a really fun sandbox where you can feel like a super-powered assassin. The only other complaint I have is a spoiler for the ending, so I might make another video about that. But overall, if you're looking for a creative game with multiple approaches to problem solving, I cannot recommend Deathloop highly enough. And that concludes my review for Deathloop. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And comment below if you're thinking about picking it up or if you played it and let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.